Hello, welcome to Hope She Gardens and Homestead. I wanted to talk today, getting ready for fall gardens, and so I wanted to talk to you about some of the biggest mistakes people make in the planning of their gardens. So if this fall garden is going to be your very first garden, or if you're just getting ready for the spring garden and you're already starting to make your plans and it's going to be your first garden, or maybe you started this past year and things just didn't work out good and you don't know why, maybe these pointers will help. I got notes because I wanted to be sure that I uh, I mentioned everything. Notes usually not something that I use. I usually just speak from my heart. But uh, I thought these were really important, so I sat down and I, I wrote them down. And I'm not going to start with um, the number one thing that you can do bad for your garden. I'm going to go in a descending order. I'm going to start with uh, number 10. And... Uh, but it is equally of importance. I guess you know, I'm putting them one, two, three, four, five, six, but they're all just as important as the other ones. So there's really not one that's more important than the other. Um, where you place your garden? Putting your garden in the wrong place. Um, if you put it in the shade, things are not gonna make it. If you put it in bright sun where it gets no retreat from the sun, things aren't gonna make it. You need to go out in your yard and look around your yard and how things are positioned and see, you know, like my garden, for example, in the morning, this side is shaded and this side's getting the full sun. Then the sun comes up noonday and everything's getting sun. And then it starts going down. This side is really shaded and this side is getting the sun. So at one point of the day, each part of my garden has the shade, one has the sun course they all get the noonday uh, sun so positioning is really important and not just with the sun when you when it rains does it all flow down into one area and stay kind of soggy people would think that would be good for plants but it's not so that's not a good area to put your garden that's cool <laughs> Ben's over there working so the racket that you're hearing he's uh, moving stones and rocks that are going to uh, go around our garden so just know somebody's working in the background another one is over fertilizing if you fertilize heavy heavy fertilizing you're gonna kill your plants sometimes the fertilizer, uh, sometimes fertilizer will actually burn your plants and so uh, you have to be careful with your fertilizing now I have said in the past that you should fertilize often like every two weeks at least once a month and you should and if you use a fertilizer like your fish food with uh, seaweed and kelp, that's not going to burn your plant. But even that, you want to cut that in half if you're using as often as that. You want to back down off of it so that you're not using so much. And also, in that herbal over fertilizing, it can be your compost. Your compost is too hot. And that's a common mistake people make and they don't realize that we have actually burn up trees because we didn't realize that our compost was too hot. Uh, you have to let it come down to temperature before you start using it in your garden. So uh, you may think, ah, oh, this feels all right, but you really need to get a thermometer so that you can test your soil because like I said, we can burn up a couple of trees because we put hot fertilizer around it. Um, another one is uh, overwatering or underwatering. Um, you want to, you, you got to get in with your hands in your garden. I mean, you know, it is a hands-on thing. You got to get in and you have to feel down in there. Get in about two to three inches and see if you feel water. If you get in two to three inches and it's wet, you don't need any water. If you get down two to three inches and it's dry, you need the water. Um, here in Texas where we are, especially this time of the year, because we have so much mulch on top, we have to water slow and long. Uh, we put it on a low setting and just let it go and slow and long. And the reason for that is it's got to get under that mulch. Mulch is a two-way thing. It'll either keep water from going in or it'll hold it in. So you've got to you know, really get under that mulch to actually water your plants. Now once you do and you get it watered in real good, you don't have to water as often as others do because you have that thick mulch. But you have to be sure you're getting down. So you have to get down, you have to 
dig under, see uh, two or three inches under if um, there's water there. If there is, you don't have to. If there's not, you need to water. And then after you water, until you get used to what you're doing, go dig down and see, did okay, did I water enough or is it just the first inch or did it actually get down in there? So over and under watering is very critical. And another is over planting. Now, I'm not one that thinks that you have to get out with your ruler and, you know, put everything out. Because nature doesn't do that. But I do believe that once things start coming in, because water does move your seeds around, things can get overcrowded and you need to do some thinning so that things do have room to grow. Because we are growing for our harvest, whereas out in nature, that's not necessarily the case. So sometimes we do have to thin out. And um, yeah, another one that goes with um, everything that we have to do, and that's garden burnout. We have all these things that we need to do, and some we get out there and we just go for it and go for it and go for it and go for it. And then it's like, man, I don't even want to get out there. And that, you know, garden burnout. And then you're, all that hard work that you did is for nothing because you don't want to go out and you just let it go to pot. So what I suggest is setting yourself a time schedule. Okay, in the morning, I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna work this much. Or in the evening, I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna work this much. And we do both, morning and evening. And you just set your time schedule. This is how much I'm gonna get done today. And sometimes you may go over because you're on a project. You know, it may be, okay, today this is the project that I'm gonna accomplish. And so you may go over that, you know, two hour time frame or three hour time frame. But um, don't, don't much. Try to hold to your schedule so that you don't get guarded down. And another is do not rotating your crops. Now I have a lot of perennials, so um, you know the perennials you're not going to rotate, but they do kind of rotate themselves. You will notice that you'll plant your perennials right here. The next year they come back, this part didn't come back, but this did and it kind of moved over a little bit. So your perennials are actually going to rotate themselves. And that's a good thing. And you can also propagate your perennials so that you have them throughout the area. Um, just in case one doesn't come back or is a little smaller than before. Or you see that it's not doing really good anymore because maybe it's uh, rotated itself into an area that it's just not doing good. And you want to just take it up. Try replant, uh, transplanting it. Sometimes that doesn't work, and so you have it in other areas. But most of our gardens are annuals and biannuals. Uh, most, the majority of them aren't the perennials. And your annuals and biannuals, you need to rotate around. Um, I had a have a bed over there that was beets, all beets at one point, and we pulled that up, and now I've got black eyed peas in there. I have another one over here that was first potatoes, then it was squash, and now I'm putting in kale. So every plant puts in different nutrients and takes out different nutrients. So you need to rotate them around and not put them in the same place year after year. And another is tillage. And I've talked about this before and I feel very strongly about it. You should never till the ground. Underneath the soil, it's working really, really hard to build up a biodiversity that is beneficial to the plants around it. And if we go in and we till it up, we're breaking that apart. It is formed itself a web under there. And uh, the fungi, the mycorrhizae fungi, is in there and it's in a web and it's working. It's building nutrition and nutrients and sending out all the things that our plants need to grow and when we go in there and till it we're breaking it all up and then it's no more of a fungal dominance it's going to be a bacterial dominance and then all you're doing is feeding your weeds you're not feeding your plants so you really shouldn't till i showed you in one of my videos how to aerate get your spade go down about four inches at the most and just lift it up don't turn it over you know, don't, don't do that. Just lift it up and go through your garden area doing that. And that aerates it. The water can get in, the uh, fertilizer can get in, and you're not disturbing the web underneath. So that's, that's what you should do instead of tilling. Um, that's healthier for the soil. 
Oh, and another thing that we should do is to partner with wildlife. There are so many beneficial insects that take care of all the bad insects, and we should plant things in our gardens and our yards that pull in those beneficials. And you'll find that what works for your ladybugs is going to work for your um, bees and for your flies. And I don't mean house flies. These flies are more like bees than, than flies. They just have the fly name. And um, your praying mantis and all these, you'll find that it's the same ones. It's the dill, it's the cardamom, it's the caraway, it's the lavender, the parsley, the milkweed, uh, butterfly weed, uh, things like that. That is uh, dandelions, which is kind of funny, you wouldn't think, but those bring in the beneficials. So we need to partner with wildlife when it comes to our gardens. And you know, the closer that we get to, oops, the closer that we get to nature and understanding nature, the better it's gonna be for our garden and the better it's gonna be for us. I mean, once you really get in tune with, with nature and understand how everything works, it's you're you're eating from your garden because you've worked in it, you've told the soil, and uh, you're gonna be healthier for it because you're eating the food from it, which is higher nutrition, because you're out exercising, working in your garden, so you're gonna be healthier for it. You're gonna be mentally healthy for it. There's something about getting into nature, working with nature, getting your hands in the dirt that is mentally beneficial. It's also gonna be spiritually better once you have entuned yourself with the earth and with nature. Um, God's creation, you know, it was made for us and for us to take care of. And when we're out there doing that job, it can only benefit us. So um, get in tune with nature. Another one is planting too early or too late. And we've probably all done this at one time or the other because um, there again, we're getting to mother nature. You know, we can find out when our um, first frost dates are and our last frost dates are and we can have it all planned out and then boom here it goes you know our we can have our plants out they're just coming out starting to look really good late frost hits nobody predicted or thought it was going to happen there it is froze all your stuff i mean runt everything that happens it's springtime what are you going to do you're going to plant again. That's the beauty of spring is we do have a wide window when we can plant. We want to get them in as early as we can so that we've got the full growing time. But if something like that happens, you just replant. You just flow with nature and um, hope that since they gave us that late frost, nature's also going to give us the growing season that we need to get a bountiful harvest. Same with the early one. And you know, we've got all these um, old movies. The farmers are out there and uh, everything's about ready to harvest. And here's coming this early frost. And they're all in a panic, you know, having to go out and get everything in before the frost hit. Or you see them out there uh, building fires out in their uh, garden, their fields, usually citrus, you know, they're building fires to ward off the frost. And I'm not telling you to go out and put fire, fly, <laughs> fires in your garden that would be dangerous but um, we see that in the movie so you know since time began they probably had to tend with early and late frost that either came too late or too early or you know what I'm saying so that is something that we can't necessarily predict but we can do pretty good and if you have a journal keep up with when you're like last year when did your early when did your early frost hit and when did your late frost hit this year do the same thing or just start it this year and that will help you a lot in the future uh, seeing how it actually happens in your yard in your area um, I know that you can go on the farmers almanac and they can tell you when it's supposed to be but you know your yard your area just a little bit different. If you're keeping up with it, then you'll know. My final thing that I wanted to talk about was using chemical fertilizer and biocides. Biocides. Bio 
sides are your pesticides, your herbicides, your fungicides, all these things that kill and take away life. And we're growing our gardens to give us life. And our gardens are green in our life. They're life growing, life giving. Why would we want to put things on it that's going to kill life? Um, there's too many organic things out there that we can do. Too many of um, the old ways that are out there if we just ex you know, look around and try to find and get online and study and, and find those things that we can do. And if one doesn't work, try another because there's, there's 10 to 15 things that you can do for one. And you find the one that works for you. And um, we don't need the the fake fertilizers, the chemical fertilizer, the ones that are organic are so much better. There's nothing better than the fish fertilizer, uh, the seaweed and the kelp. I mean, those are great things. They're natural. And um, you're not going to, I mean, the chemical ones, yeah, they may make things just burst out and look really great, but it's what's going on on the inside that matters because we're for that high nutrition. We want the nutrients because we're going to be eating these things. And, um, you know, our bodies are made up of the, the fungi and the bacteria, and we need that to be in balance, to be healthy. And if we go out here spraying all this stuff on our food, getting it all out of balance, when we eat it, what is going to happen to the, our bodies? They're going to get out of balance. You know, here in America in particular, we have so much disease. The cancers are just outrageous. And I blame food for most all the cancers. And I've even read a study where it said like 98% of them are caused by food. So we need to be careful about what we eat. And you know, for your heart, what you eat matters. Diabetes, what you, what you eat matters. All these diseases, all really come down to what we put into our bodies because what we put in is what we're going to get out so good things in will be good things out i want you to be healthy i want you to be happy i thank you so much for joining me today and i hope that i've helped you a little bit um, give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy the video if you haven't subscribed already please do so and i hope to see you again soon thank you so much for joining me bye-bye